Today, I want to talk about the buildings in your settlement in Lord of the Rings Rise to War and the order in which you should upgrade these things. So if you were ever wondering, what the heck does each of these buildings do? This is the video for you. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and in this video, we're going to give you a full rundown of what each of these buildings do and what their priority should be for you. And if you're interested in more Lord of the Rings Rise to War guides, then you should consider subscribing. And if you're enjoying my content, throw a like on the video that supports the channel and it's 100% free to you. Let's get started with the tippy top of your building roster and that is your main hall. This is the building that limits the level of all of your other buildings. And yes, as you can see here, it will become very resource intensive to upgrade although not terribly time intensive in the grand scheme of things like 26 hours is not all that much time for a building upgrade in this style of a mobile game other buildings that you will get access to very very quickly include your storage this simply includes the number of resources that you can have in your city the more storage capacity you have the better the next building that is very important is the apothecary now this is related to the number of command units that can be in your hospital. This is essentially an area where the troops aren't dead, but unless you revive them, they, they are not coming back. You can't use them anymore. So the hospital or apothecary is very important. You want to have a large enough apothecary size such that it never overflows because if it overflows, your troops just die. The more you level up your apothecary, the faster your treatment time will be. It does take food to treat your wounded troops, but that is a very important building that I would not neglect. Now, the next four buildings I want to talk about are the tribute buildings. Lumber, stone, ore, and grain. These are pretty straightforward. You get more production per hour for the levels that you put into these things, and it'll show you the effect that you get. I like to work on these buildings when I don't have something else going during the day, right? And I like to have long-running buildings go overnight. Like, for example, I'm going to go to bed soon-ish, and I've got my military academy cooking up. By the way, going to bed soon as of the time of this recording, I'll probably go live like in the morning for most people. But anyways, right? So I queue this up before I go to bed, so there's no wasted building time on some of this other stuff, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The next buildings we need to talk about are the barracks and the conscription post, and these are related. The barracks is related to the total number of command units you can have in your city. This is really important. The more troops you can have max, uh, I mean, obviously, the bigger army you could have on hand to use on your different commanders. Now, I personally have a very small army at this point because I keep fighting things. And I guess some of my marches are actually not in my city. So this is maybe not the best way to show this to you. Um, but a lot of my stuff is out of my city, out and about. I'm constantly battling. I'm constantly getting dead troops. So I haven't accumulated like a ton of troops so far. Maybe there'll be a point where I get close to my capacity. But if you ever wanted to see, hey, what is my total command capacity? Like, how am I doing toward that limit? The best place to go and get a look at that is actually in your barracks. The barracks is where you can see up top how much space you actually have right over here. Boom. Right up top, the total number of command units that you've got. Now, what is a command unit? This essentially means um, the number of troops that count as sort of one full command. So uh, different troop types have different numbers of troops that count as a full command. For example, uh, these guardians, you need 100 of them to have one full command. If you have 101, now you have two commands worth. Uh, these eagles, however, are totally different. These are five per command. So 15 eagles is actually three command points. That's how that works. So barracks is where you can see all that, and the barracks icon is in the bottom left over there. If I go back to my buildings, though, which is the button all the way in the bottom left, the conscription post is related because this dictates the number of command units you can train at any moment in time per queue that you have. It also influences the conscription time, so how fast you train those troops, and it influences the number of queues that you have for both hiring and 
Hiring is not something I've even reached in the game at this point, and just conscripting them in general. So if I show you this now, I go to my barracks, and I tap one of these. It'll tell me information about the unit, but when I tap the conscription button that was down over here, you can see I can start to queue up troops. In the bottom left, it's showing me the number of troops that I would ultimately be training. Over here is the grand total resources. The number of queues is the number that you can have going at a time. Now, if I wanted to recruit these other troop types in the back that I was gifted from quest lines, I would actually need to have a special building that I would need to capture, but that's a topic for another day. I'm just going to cancel all this out and make my way back to the building list because we've got more to talk about. The fellowship hall is something you'll also get pretty early on. It makes it so that the number of times you can be helped and have your time reduced on things that you're building be increased and the amount of time that you save goes up as well uh, the more that you level up your fellowship hall this building has felt like one of the less important buildings to me and i really haven't prioritized it all that much because like i don't know i'm saving 30 seconds i kind of like how much do i care about that should i care about this Let, leave a comment down below and you tell me if i should care more about that a building that I do care about a lot, though, is the market. Ooh, baby. There's a bunch of deals that you get with the market. I covered that in depth in a recent video. I'm going to have a card up in the top. You can check that video out at the end of this one if you want to see exactly how you play the market to get some sick value. This is a high-priority building for me because I like to go for the highest tiles possible and then trade the resources later, uh, and sometimes I don't even have to trade at all. So I like the market a lot. The battlements influences your settlement's durability. So if your city is getting attacked, uh, this makes it so you have to get attacked more before your city will be forced off the map and need to be relocated. And that's an entirely separate process. The next thing we need to talk about is the military academy. This is a building that will unlock much later. In fact, it's showing you the sort of main hall levels, I think, that these buildings unlock. Main hall five, I think, is when you first get the military academy. This is a very good building. It increases the number of command units you can have under a commander. Huge. At level 7, I get 16 more command units in each of my marches. And when I get to level 8, it's going to be 19 total command units extra in each of my uh, marches. That's amazing. Now, the final building that I'm working my way toward is the Bowman Tower. And this essentially defends your city. At least I think that's what it does. I'll be able to tell you more about it once I've unlocked it. Main Hall Level 9 is when I'll be able to do that for you. But there are more buildings to talk about. When you tap the icons on the left-hand side, it will toggle between the different quarters of the different races that you're hosting in your city. The first one that you'll see there is the race that is in your city. And because I chose a dwarven race at the start, this is the configuration that I've got because I'm Erebor as my faction. I've got these different quarters for training different unit types. Now, this is important uh, for a number of reasons, but the reason I'm about to share is not going to be the one you were probably thinking of, which is that these buildings themselves, so when I work on these quarters, they actually increase your gold levy and production. They are very, very important to upgrade frequently and early. Not only does upgrading these buildings give you more gold per levy and more production of resources, but there's more. They also are a limiting factor for upgrading other buildings that you have here to get higher tiered units of these different unit types. And you may be wondering, Chisco, but like, why would I train these other unit types? Why do I need these? Well, there are commanders that benefit from the different unit types, and that's why you would potentially want, even though you, even though I am Erebor and I'm interested in dwarves, I might have a commander in later seasons, that, or even in this season, potentially, that really benefits humans, and I might want to go all in on that strategy, even though I've chosen a different faction. So I mention that because, yes, it is, of course, important to... Um, you know, have this unlocked when that becomes possible for you as your main hall gets leveled up more. Uh, but it's important to continue to upgrade these very aggressively, especially right when you unlock them, so that you get all of the levy bonus and the production bonus. Now, I also have really neglected unlocking the other tiers of troops. This, to me, feels like a very low priority. I've just been focused on T3s for my main unit type. That is a great place, I feel like, that I'm in there. 
and that's where I'm hanging out for now. I don't see a lot of reason to upgrade this any further uh, past this point unless I want faster conscription time, which like I do, but I don't anytime soon. Like I'm usually not conscripting anything because I don't have the resources to do all my building upgrades and all my conscription. So I'm looking forward to the point when I can focus on conscription then and only then do I think like I will double back and hone in on those buildings. One last tip for you when you're constructing any of these buildings or you're about to construct a building that is going to improve your levy amount, okay? So for example, improving your levy amount will come from the quarters over here, right? If you're about to upgrade one of these quarters, consider letting a few of your levy chances accumulate so that when you go to claim them, you have that building completed and now you get more gold when you go and you make your claims. That is a really easy way to just get some extra gold for free and is one of the reasons why I was like, you know what? There's probably some interactions between all these buildings that makes it worth making this video. And if you found this video helpful, do me a huge favor, throw a like on the video. It's 100% free to you and consider subscribing to the channel for more Lord of the Rings Rise to War videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. And if you're looking for that video about the market that I talked about earlier, I've got a card up in the top. Just tap that little info button. It'll give you everything you need. And if for some reason you're actually just looking for my beginner's guide, I'll have a card up in the top for that one as well. So I've got your freaking back. Until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies.